Yad Ashik Edo Shinne, Tretnesani Nishlo, Belagana Bashes Chin, Kitlichini Dashiche, or Belagana Dashinella, Late Sensa des Ahate Nasha. Hello, welcome to Painting with the Artist, brought to you by the Wheelwright Museum of the American Indian. I'm your host, Dylan Peace, and with that, let's, let's get started. Um, so today we're going to be doing a very simple painting, I guess a still life is what you would call it. I have these three um, very young and very pretty um, geraniums growing in these mason jars, and I just thought I'd paint them. And what we're going to be doing is painting on uh, cardboard. Just <clears throat> the idea is that if you have any kind of cardboard or anything laying at home, it would be something very easy that you can paint on. And all you would really have to do is um, is gesso the cardboard, as as I've done. And what you're going to want to do is gesso both sides. Um, I did two or three coats about three coats of gesso and you want to do it to both sides, you're going to notice that um, because it's cardboard, it'll warp a little and that's why you want to gesso both sides. And that's what I have done. And But you'll see that there's still some warping and that's just the nature of the cardboard. Um, you don't ideally want to be painting on cardboard because it's not going to... Um, hold up for, for, for very long, but the idea is that if you just want to paint and you have cardboard at home and some acrylic gesso that you can prime it with, that you can, you can paint on it. And so um, I'm going to be painting with oil paints and um, mineral spirits and linseed oil, and so um, I guess we can just get started. <laughs> I usually like, um, a lot of people like to start off with a drawing or um, sketchbook drawings or they like to kind of just get an idea of the composition on, on what um, surface they're using. And I, I, in a way I like to do the same thing, but um, instead of drawing with pencil or with charcoal, um, what I like to do is do a simple underpainting in a, um, whatever color you like and so I'm just gonna push these back a little so the idea is that you're gonna be painting with a single tone uh, you're gonna do a monochromatic underpainting and just to get a, get an idea and put everything in um, put everything where where you see it and um, we're gonna come back with with the other colors and with the other layers um, after we get an idea of how everything lines up and how everything is looking on um, our surface. And so what I'm really just doing is um, thinning out. So I have a palette of um, what I usually work with is a lizard crimson, ultramarine blue, and cadmium yellow. And these are just mixtures that you make with it. I have my green, my brown, my orange, some white, and some black. I mix, uh, mixing them all together. I like to mix my own black, and um, and I also like to paint very thin. And so, I, part of the reason I didn't really want to do this in acrylics was because it's I don't really like thinning it out with water. I think I get a much better feel for the paint with um, with oil colors, and so it's just a matter of preference. You can still you can still do a lot with acrylics. I just prefer the kind of texture or the the feel of oil paints and the feel of um, mixing. And so um, so right now we're just kind of starting, just trying to put everything. Um, get everything situated and kind of just get an idea for where things are and I think in that sense I like to make sure that I'm painting very loosely um, I'm not really concerned with making any 
kind of mistakes or anything. This is the very first layer, and of course, it's all um, in a lizard crimson, and so or whatever, whatever hue you choose, you would like to use. Um, you're just really putting <coughs> putting things in place so that later on you can come in and and worry about the details and and worry about. Um, everything else that'll make it a more defined image later on. And so um, you'll notice I'm using a bit of a dry brush technique. It's just to keep some of the white of the surface on there. Um, you don't want to do too much too fast and lose the white of the surface, but also you just want you just want enough enough of a suggestion of what you're looking at so that um, obviously you're gonna this layer will have to dry and go over it with another color um, so you don't really want to be using too much paint too much pigment um, especially with oil colors in this first layer. Um, also, I'm only thinning it out with my mineral spirits. I haven't added any um, linseed oil, and that's simply because there exists a rule. It's called, um, as it applies to oil painting, it's called fat over lean. And what that means is you want your earliest layers to be lean. You don't want that much fat, that much oil in it. Um, it's just a matter of um, concerning the longevity of your layers, or I guess the painting in itself. So if, um, the paint will hold better with, with fatter layers on top of thinner layers and you don't really want to work the other way. Um, so, so right now I'm just have my color thin with my mineral spirits and I'm just getting a little bit of sense of where things are, seeing if I'm happy with how this is looking. Um, there's a lot of negative space up here that I'm not really sure how I feel about. But this is only the beginning, and we can figure that out later on in the painting. You don't want to be very um, what is you don't really want to be restrictive in your um, early layers. You don't want to be too careful or too um, too afraid of making mistakes. I think the best thing you can do is make mistakes. At least that's how I paint. Is um, try to paint um, at a very fairly um, like a little bit of a quick pace, just because I like to get things down quickly. I like to react to each mark I make. Um, and I think there's a, there's an element that you introduce when you're working a little bit spontaneously and it's just something to kind of contend with and kind of react to. I think that's what, that's what painting is really to me is kind of just reacting to reacting to your subject, reacting to where you are, but also reacting to, um, I guess every brush stroke you make, every mark you make is kind of a, you make it and it's there and you kind of have to contend with it the rest of the painting. Of course you can paint over it, um, but it's still, that's still reacting to it. Um, and so, what I'm also going to do is with the very, very thin layer, I guess I'll, maybe it's not a good idea, but I'm going to run 
bring some color up from the top and let it just to get rid of that white and thin out this paint a lot just so I can see this very thin color run and this is what I like about painting is just seeing the flow of the paint, seeing the flow of of your materials and reacting to it and and making that as much a part of what I'm doing as everything else. And so really just trying to get rid of that white and get rid of add some color so it's a lot easier to go back over in the next stage so with that we have a fairly decent start at what we're going to be painting and uh, just really getting a, another painting going and trying to get a sense of where everything is and so you can go back in with the colors you want to use and pay more attention to um, light and form in these next layers but just to start out with an underpainting. And so um, with that, we'll continue in the next episode. And so thanks for watching.